Welcome to the Soulful Sound Podcast. This podcast is about celebrating the leaders, teachers, and coaches who guide fellow humans to connect, heal, and discover themselves so they can express their gifts into the world. I am Simone Niles, a coach, sound healer, vocalist, and author. Thank you for being here with me today. Stephen R. Marriott is a best-selling Amazon author, speaker, and vagabond. His two books, Candy Floss Guitar and Santiago's Guitar, are part of his Reluctant Pilgrim series, where he writes about self-discovery and hope, a journey both physical and spiritual, guided at times by the unlikeliest of angels. Stephen transitioned from his background as an investment analyst to living life on his own terms. Through his work, he inspires others to walk their path with passion and purpose. In this episode, Stephen talks about his life-changing 31-day walk along El Camino de Santiago in Spain, which leads to self-discovery, igniting his purpose, and later him taking action on realizing it through his writing and speaking ventures. His story is inspiring, especially for those wanting to make a transition from a corporate job or a job you don't love into building a life filled with passion and fulfillment. I am so pleased to have joined me today, Stephen R. Marriott, who is a best-selling Amazon author, speaker, and vagabond, passionate about living life on his own terms. Through his work, he inspires others to walk their path and with passion and purpose. Welcome, Stephen. Thanks so much for joining me today. Glad to be here on this uh, Friday afternoon. Yes, thank you. Thank you. you. Now, I absolutely love the work that you do. I've looked to, you know, I've checked out some of the the articles you've written. I know that you're an author and you've written some incredible books. Um, But I'm really inspired uh, by a topic which is very close to my heart, and that is living with joy and fulfillment. You know, a lot of the work that Mm -hmm. I've done over the years is about helping people to find their purpose, to find their gifts and express those into the world. And I know your story and covers a lot about that. So can you tell me a little bit about your story? Gosh, where do I start? It's um, I guess I'll, I'll try and do the uh, condensed um, version of that. But but I mean, I think for me, there's always been um, a creativity inside me that I wanted to express to the world. Mm. Um, but I never really uh, felt I really understood what that was or knew what that was. I but I just felt this sort of inner voice that wanted to sort of break out and and speak. But I just didn't. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I didn't know what if that voice had the opportunity to break out. I didn't know what it was. It would say, yeah. Um, because I sort of like a lot of people follow the traditional route. Um, did my GCSEs, and then suddenly find, oh, I've got, oh, I've done reasonably well in these GCSEs. I've got enough now to go and do A levels, and then you get these A levels. And I was never suspecting, you know, that, mm. that I'd then follow that route of university. But that's what happened when you, right. when you get the grades, and um, so I. Um, I did a, de- a degree in economics, and then that that took me into the investment financial world, and um, that was quite an interesting period of my life, mm. um, working um, for around fifteen years or so wow. um, in Bristol, then in the city of London, um, researching investments, and uh, you know, I was working for a fast growing company, mm. um, interesting people, interesting access. You get to some to, to some real um, investment expertise but I guess at the end of the day there was always something inside of me that that sort of wanted really to, to, to see more mm. and the world and and somehow express that so um gosh it, over 10 years ago now I took a sabbatical uh, a year sabbatical turned into around 18 months wow nice. and um how do I put it I think once you've had that sort of freedom or, or travel freedom it kind of corrupts the rest of your life in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> I love that choice of word. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 in a positive way uh, uh, for me. But when you've seen, you know, um, the, the idea of um, of what's out there, mm. experience different cultures, different people. And for me, I um, I didn't know what I wanted to do after the, this travel experience. Um, but I ended up going after that, coming back to London mm-hmm. and still have pay the you know the mortgage etc and i returned to the investment world but this is i say once i think you know you, you this is how it corrupts because then i'm then i'm 
back in the investment world, back at the desk. Yeah. Sort of sometimes daydreaming about, oh, what's the next exotic location I want to go to? Or what does this perhaps volunteering project would be interesting, et cetera. Um, and dur- well, but but during those those that eighteen month period of five, I kept a, sort of a travel blog. But it was more of an email. I, I was just emailing back to friends and colleagues uh, my experiences. So I think that sort of put inside of me this idea mm. to to write. And to cut the, a long story short, um, in terms of my my former life, uh, maybe it, what was it? I'm just trying to figure out the dates. About four years later, I. I I was also going through some personal changes. Mm. Um, um, I kind of realised that no, I don't think I can. I, I cannot stick mm. doing the sort of traditional nine to five uh, yeah, corporate corporate job. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think um, yes, I, I, I appreciate. I'm probably I'm talking to someone um, you know who perhaps has been through that experience and and, and meets lots of people that that have um, and you know people um, you know who are on a journey as such. Mm. Mm. And so. Um, I quit the job, um, but what still wasn't sure what I was going to do next. But but I think it this voice inside me was sort of beginning to protest, mm. for lack of a better term, beginning to speak up more. But still, I didn't know it was fuzzy as as yeah. to what as to what that voice would be. So I kind of did the only thing which um, um, made sense to me. I knew in terms of changing my environment, and that was to go travelling again. Right, and so off I went again. I revisited some places in um, Latin America. That's why I went before for fifteen months th- mm. that I hadn't visited or wanted to, to to get to know a bit a bit more. Um, just had to do some great things, hiking, different you know different dif- different experiences in Colombo and places. And then I went off to Asia, which I didn't know so well. I had a bit of time there, but I have to say, after all of that experience, I came back to London, and. Sort of no, no further knowing what I really wanted, yeah. Than before, and perhaps um, feeling, you know, a little bit low because of that, because I sort of felt the pressure of like, I've got to do do something. Yeah, Yeah. what I do now, um, um, you know, I've given up a career. Have Mm -hmm. I made a mistake? Um, You know, my flat was rented out. So, uh, um, and when I came back, it was still rented out. I had nowhere to live now. So Mm -hmm. I was, um, you know. crashing at a friend's place not quite sure mm. of like my next move anyway sorry i said i'll cut the cut long story short no, it's please, continuing please. it's really the, interesting yeah, i'd love okay. to hear your story no okay. problem so um so I, I guess you could say i was a little bit depressed at this this point i, yeah. I don't think i realize it's only it's only in, in hindsight, hindsight yeah. yeah in reflection now that i realized i was a bit depressed because i was kind of I, um, how I put? I was going around in circles a bit. I kind of felt the need or reassurance of my old life in terms of stability, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I wanted a new life, but I didn't quite know what that was. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that sort of perpetuated a bit in, into just me being sort of not quite myself, a little bit down, yeah, um, not as outgoing. Anyway, so I was staying at a friend's place in central London. And then I think it was a Monday. It was a it was a, a winter, not a winter, but it's a wet London dark Typical night. London. You know what it's like. You know, <laughs> yeah. when it's grey skies and it's <laughs> raining. It it is it, you know it that is it's not the best of places. Right. So, uh, but I found myself how to put it nursing a, a, a pint of beer in a, one of the pubs local to where I was, I was staying in central London, and I was in there and. Um, it was just me and the barman. You know, it was that Monday night when nobody mm-hmm. was out mm-hmm. and everybody obviously just went straight home um, after work. And he kind of looked up for me and he, and, and he said something like, no, he asked me first, you know, how are you? Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, that's a bit strange. And I just, but then I realised I must have had a kind of glum, you know, expression on my face. Um, and then pretty much after he'd asked me how I am, he said to me, you need to walk the Camino, um, Camino del Santiago. Are you aware of what the Camino... De Santiago is so. If you're not, um, you know, some of your listeners um, may or may not not be. But but yeah, but, but so the the Camino um, de Santiago is um, how to put it. It's a pilgrimage across northern Spain. Mm. It's a pilgrimage that um, 
it's approximately about 800 k- kilometers long. Wow. The, um, which ends in the city of um, Santiago in northwest Spain in Galicia. Mm. And um, it's, it's around, it's, a, it, it, it's um, you know, about a thousand years old. Um, and uh, at its height in medieval times, about a, um, a million um, Christians were walking this pilgrimage across uh, that ultimately ended in, in Santiago, the city mm. of Santiago in Spain. Uh, it was the second most important pilgrim, religious pilgrimage mm. um, after the pilgrimage to Rome. And the traditional route um, starts now, the classic route, which people t- tend to do now, starts in a small um, Basque village um, just on the French side of the Pyrenees mm-hmm. and then continues over the Pyrenees over a seamless border into Spain. And then you walk wow. across Spain, depending on how fast you walk, between four to five weeks. Wow. Wow. Um, Wow, that's amazing. To, yeah, to, to, to walk that. And now, I mean, people still do it for religious reasons. Yeah. But a lot less so now. Mm. Um, people do it maybe for the challenge of walking across a country, um, maybe as a gap year experience, mm. maybe because they just love Spain and the culture of Spain and they want to experience Spain in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And um, some, uh, uh, But also people do it because um, it's a sort of a spiritual walk. And um, they're looking for answers or just looking for the time out mm. to um, 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 to hopefully have the answers by the by the time they reach the cathedral of um, Santiago. Yeah. Um, in, in Santiago, where the apostle St. James is supposedly buried. Mm. And um, so anyway, I kind of um, listened to him. He told me his story, which was um, pretty amazing. Uh, to cut a long story short, he's po- he was Polish and... Um, he was working um, in the restaurant industry in, I think, in Krakow and, and Poland. But his dream was to be a filmmaker. But he um, he had a fiance. He wanted to get hurry, hurry up and get married, and him to commit to being a manager that he had been he'd been offered, to, offered a managerial position. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, he was in a bit of a crisis. He couldn't make the decision. So he he had heard of the Camino. He walked it. Right. Lo and behold, this is why I met him in London. After he walked the Camino, right, he left okay. the restaurant industry. Left his fiance, <laughs> wow. and in that same week I met him, him and his producer friend, who he met when he came to London, um, had raised a million pound for their independent film project. What an incredible story! <laughs> so anyway, that that story stayed with me. But, but not, not, and then um, I just, well, I kind of not wasn't something I was thinking about daily, but within the space of a month, I seemed to get two more signs, which which pointed towards the um, Camino de Santiago mm. walk. Mm. Um, I won't go into too much more detail about them, but one of them, um, I was in a bookshop um, flicking through the travel section of books, as, as right. I did. Uh, but next to the travel section, there was a book by Paolo Coelho. Um, mm, you, love him. Yeah, so um, he's most famous for the Alchemist book. Yeah. And I always thought that was his first book, but it turns out his first book is called The Pilgrimage. Right. And and then I saw that in the bookshop and I picked it up and thought, well, that's interesting. That's Paolo Coelho. Oh, well, no, I didn't know too much about him then, but mm. I had re- my travels and things. It's a very popular book in, in, the, yeah. in the hostels and things, The, the Alchemist. It's like, oh, his first book is about walking the community to Santiago. It's a memoir of him walking. Wow. Walking. I thought, gosh, that's another sign. And then um, I had a third sign um, about the Camino that um, just kind of hit me. So anyway... This is to cut the long story short about the, this this part of things. Um, I thought I've got a, my, my flat still rented out. That you know have nothing to lose. Why don't Why don't I walk the Camino? So within a month, there I was in that same village in in in, in the in the Basque region of wow. um, uh, of France, walking over the Pyrenees um, in the first day. I'm kind of average fit, but it's a pretty tough start. You're walking over the Pyrenees. <laughs> um and yeah during that walk uh, i started to discover more about myself i was i was um keeping a diary and just i learned a number of a number of things about uh, learning to slow down and taking the environment mm. and during that process um i guess my writing my notes started to become more descriptive right. as i you know would slow down and look behind me and Look at the hills I just crossed, or the I don't know. Look at look at the um, just nature around me. And take the time just to breathe and, and and take things in. And by the end of end of that journey, after thirty one days of walking, I said, "I've got to share this. I've got to share this." So I set a blog up, 
I just started doing no more blogging about the experience of the mm. Camino and, and and other sort of travel experiences I'd had. But my Camino um, blog somehow morphed into a fictional kind of blog serial right, uh, of a flamenco guitarist, um, a coming of age story of a young man who um, who lives on the Camino route and is um, forced to make a decision about whether to commit to going to work in his in his um, um, family farm or committing to be a flamenco guitarist. Mm. And he finds himself busking along the Camino route. Um, and the more he busks and the more people in, engage with his music, um, he starts to um, believe that he can be a professional flamenco guitarist. Right. And so that's that's kind of what happened to me. And so after that, after that, when I finally returned, returned to the UK, um, as I say, this story was a was a was a, it was sort of blog sections. Really, I discovered um, Wattpad. Have you heard of Wattpad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, most famous because of Fifty uh, Fifty uh, Shades of Grey, That's which started right. on that. So my book <laughs> is not is, is, is not erotic. <laughs> it, it's very gentle, um, etc. But I put the I, I started putting the serial pieces on there, right. and I started getting a following. I mean, the first section or the first part of the story maybe 60 people read it mm-hmm. and then people wanted to know more and then by the end of the time when i'd sort of put put the final um um piece of the story down, it was about a thousand followers wow that's um, awesome and so then i discovered self-publishing amazon um but yeah and so then i put it out on there and then it, i didn't think too much about it and I thought I'd kind of, it was a novella. I just kind of rounded the story off as I thought it, it, it ended. But people seemed to like the character. And then I started getting nice reviews on Amazon. And, and maybe a third of the reviews, people were saying, what happens next? I want to know. If right. next one so then I kind of had the realisation that maybe this is this is my voice. It's an author's voice. Mm. And um, so as I said, I came back to London. I never went back into the permanent world of, of working um in the investment industry, but I started to pay the bills. I mean, that wasn't a bestseller just like that, although it, 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 although it was um, it was beginning to gain traction. Yeah, and so um, I guess I gained this kind of self belief about the different things I can do. I know I, I, it seems I can write, and I'm building up a small following. Um, I've got these investment skills, mm. and so um, I returned to London and started doing some consultancy work, but focusing on the writing. Um, that took me towards public speaking because I had to get, when the book came out, I got invited to, 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 to do some, some promotion. Some, yeah, promotion and, yeah, of and course. I did some um, speeches and talks at bookshops and readings. And so, mm. and then I kind of realized I need to improve my, 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 my public speaking ability. So that took me into the world of public speaking as well. And so mm. now it, I, I'm, I have a few different sort of uh, strings to my bow. Yeah. And I'm quite happy with, with, with the way. Uh, I'm balancing them. Yeah. Well, I think what's really fascinating to me about your story, and it's something that I talk about a lot, is, you know, when it certainly when it comes to discovering your gift, your purpose, whatever word you want to put in there, walking your path, is this inner knowing and sense of being of listening. So I really talk a lot about having this inner wisdom and this inner call that we all, you know, first and foremost need to listen to. And it's not always easy to do that. You know, you noticed that there was something missing. You noticed there that was a voice inside of you wanting to express something. You didn't know what it was, um, but you you listened. You stopped and you listened as fuzzy as it was in the beginning. I like to think that you kind of allowed yourself to just be nudged into the flow of things. So you didn't know what was going to happen, but you took the steps anyway. That's, well, certainly takes a lot of courage, but also a sense of surrender. I don't know what this means. I have no idea. But if I'm open and I listen, then maybe I'll be guided, which, you know, the signs, how how random is it to meet someone, you know, in the bar who says you need to walk, you know, to do this walk. Mm -hmm. I've done this. This is what I've achieved. His story being something of an inspiration as well. And then you going out there and, you know, experiencing it for yourself, but also recognizing the reality of coming back into the old environment, how that still held you, I want to say held you captive for a little while until you decided, no, I'm just going to go and see where this, where this nudge is really yes. leading me. Yeah, yeah. And and that's really, that's really, you know, to me impressive because we, I don't think that enough of us listen 
the sound it's always there but we need to listen and you've done just that and from from there obviously it's led you to explore yourself explore the world and come back and much more connected into what I think you feel now is allowing you to have much more joy and fulfillment and freedom in your life which is you know what we all want and deserve so I think that's awesome I uh, yeah absolutely I think yeah you've um you, you've summarize kind of how i how i feel subsequently very well yeah. i mean there's something they say about the camino to santiago is that when you complete the the camino journey itself your own journey is only just beginning that's beautiful mm-hmm. love that and that's what yeah that's kind of what happened to me it, it was then applying the lessons mm. um and some of the self um understanding yeah to the real world yes i've been on the journey i've been on the quest as such mm. Now this is my environment, and uh, I now exist in. Okay, let's see if I can apply the lessons of the quest. Yes. To to my um, my journey going forward. Mm. When I was growing up, one of the things that my mum always said was, um, "The soul knows; the rest of you just needs to catch up." <laughs> yeah. And and that saying has been a big one for me. But it sounds just like that for you, where you just part of you knew, but yeah. the rest of you just needed to catch up, and that was through going through the steps, following the signs, yeah. you know, that's what, that's really cool. I think so, yeah. Well, I mean, you've got your heart, which kind of knows, but um, it can get blocked, noise and things and get in the way, but deep down it knows. Mm. But then you've got your head, yeah. which is sort of confirmation of the practicalities. Sure. Um, and I think, you know, with when you're in a routine and in daily work and things, you can be so um, in your head in terms of always trying to, look at the practicalities and the solutions yeah. as opposed to the heart, what is sort of the bigger, yeah. the, the, the bigger purpose. And so it's um, yeah, having the freedom walking across a country mm. for 31 days, um, seeing how other people live, listening to other people's stories. Because on the Camino, as I suggested, a lot of people have a purpose and a reason for walking mm-hmm. it. And, you know, a lot of people have had perhaps bad experiences in their life or... And they're listening to their stories and putting it into context. Yeah. Um, and then just being surrounded by nature, especially when you live in a city like London. Yes. Um, you, you kind of get disconnected to nature if you're not in nature enough. And so I think, um, as I say, it's then, okay, here are some things which are helping me reconnect to my soul. Yeah. Um, now, how do I, how do I bring that to, to, to my life purpose yeah. in the real world? Yeah, of course. Balancing heart and head, really important. Mm. But I do I do take your point on connecting with nature. It is something that I feel certainly living in London and living in a city, I have to consciously do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not I'm not living in the country, I'm living in a city. And so it's great to be able to go. I mean, as I do with my brother very often, we go and walk in the forests and have some amazing uh-huh. just being surrounded by nature yes. and the clarity and the refueling and energizing and all of that that happens just from, you know, reconnecting. Mm -hmm. is so important it's so important and so again you know the environment being a a very big catalyst as well so you did come back to London the first time and you you started to feel a bit like okay I better just get back into that same old routine as you said the stability your head taking over Mm -hmm. and then you you had this uh this you know you opened up enough and listened to go and take that walk um, and and when you came back the second time, you were much more connected to your heart's calling. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like then, you know, you were able then to use your head practically to, to make those things happen. Yeah, I think it's a bit, it, you need confirmation as well. It's, then there's that old adage about, you know, sink or swim, you know, you right. just, just dive into the pool. But at the end of the day, you might be a natural swimmer, so you're not going to, you know, if, if you're looking at that, that, that sort of metaphor, literally. Yes. But if you've never swum before... There's a, you know, there's a good chance you're gonna you, you, you're gonna drown, and yeah. so you you do need sort of confirmation about you know um, an element of wisdom to say, mm. okay, am I doing the right thing? You know, it's a bit like, you know, like saying I'm going to be a Hollywood movie star without never acting acted yeah, before, sure. and you know you have to take the steps and without uh, a doubt, yeah, towards things. And one other thing about the Camino is they say roughly it's about a million steps. Wow, you take um, um, on, on this on this journey. And um, it's about uh, you sort of get fit for purpose. You know, you only have to be sort of average um, f- um, fit to be um, you know, to, to begin with. Mm. Um, you know, 
but it's a long way to walk, you know, across a country, 800 kilometers. Yeah. But you get fit physically as you walk. The more you walk, you get more walking fit. And um, the journey doesn't seem to be so daunting mm. um, as you just make those uh, continual steps towards the, the, the bigger journey. Um, but you also, I think, you get sort of spiritually fit. That's beautiful. As you as you journey more, as you have to take the time to, you know, to put it very simply, all you're doing on that walk is you're, you're walking, breathing, yeah, taking everything in, eating and sleeping, and you're just repeating that process. Then mm. the next day, you know, with different sights, sounds, people, environments who, who you engage with. But it's kind of another thing they say. It's kind of like life condensed into a month or so. Yeah, and so it's the start of the journey birth there's the end of the journey which is kind of like um this um like a rebirth Mm. and then you've got some tests there's always going to be some tests for you whether it's in physical injuries stuff that's come up that you know you're having to ditch deal with in your mind um and that's kind of almost like death in a way Mm. um and so it's it's birth death rebirth yeah i kind of think of it as and so you know there's so many lessons mm. that um, that 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 come with that journey, um, without a doubt. Yeah. And I think that you know, as you said, all you do is this, 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 and this. Mm. It's, it's simplicity, simplicity, and consistency. Those yes. two things, mm-hmm. that repetition of yeah. simple, and you know, being mindful and mm-hmm. slowing down, yeah. and all of these things that just offer you mm. a space to receive, mm. which is great. Mm-hmm. But so I was, I was going to get the actual point. Yeah, there was a point uh, uh, that in terms of um, confirmation, it's yes. at the end of that journey. It's like, how could I have walked across a, a country um, close to a thousand kilometers? But I can do it. Yeah. But you've got to start the journey and take those steps towards it mm. to, 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 to confirm that you can do that. Or you, you know, I can get over an injury. You know, a lot of people will get blisters or leg injuries and have to then learn to slow down and things. Yep. And it's almost like, yes, I, I, um, I can be fit to mm. do this. And, um, you know, so, and I think when you bring that back to life, it's like, okay, I don't know. Um, I'm going to write a book. I'm not going to be a best-selling author to begin with. But what I have to do then is apply the the learnings, writing, mm-hmm. and then I need confirmation. But if I'm getting confirmation, um, yeah. that's th- that's when I know I'm doing the right thing. But I think you, you know, it's learning. You have to start. Yeah, simple uh, and, yeah. and consistent. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, um, you have to take steps. Yeah. Te- steps toward towards a goal yeah and although it may seem so far away at one point incrementally you're always you, you, a step closer yes exactly yeah that's mm-hmm. beautiful and i think that it's, it's such a great parallel the way you've described that to life because yes we will also have challenges and ups and downs and doubts and all the things mm-hmm. that we go through in life um but just knowing that it just putting one foot in front of the other helps you along that journey is awesome. And also, yeah, it's okay to slow down. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get there. It just means that the pace needs to adjust. Mm -hmm. And all of those things, I think, yeah, definitely are parallel with life in general. And to come back to something you said, which which I thought was very interesting about the confirmation and, you know, you know, not necessarily jumping straight into the water, because if you've never swum before, it can be, you know, quite a, an interesting experience, I'm sure. Um, I, I wanted to say that something there jumped out to me that when we go even deeper into our connection with self, then we recognize that we all started in water mm-hmm. and that there is, there is a comfort or there is a knowing of being surrounded and yes, being yes. engulfed that allows us somehow an inner knowing to take the courageous steps like the ones that you have or you know people thinking I don't know if this is possible but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go anyway Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna follow through and see where it leads um and then within that that reflection and that review and that refining which is really important to keep you aligned with whatever path you might be taking you know to me brings that confirmation in you know, I always talk about the three R's not coming from a uh, an academic perspective or a learning in school, but re- review, refine, and reflect. And those mm-hmm. three things are so important mm-hmm. in business, in life, in anything yes. so yep. that you can better and do more. 
Mm-hmm. What an incredible story. I, I absolutely love, love the, I mean, I had a glimpse of it in the past. So now having it in full bloom. And so now you are, tell me about where you are now. So you're a writer and tell me about your books. So you, you spoke about your travel blog and is that what then turned into your novel? Uh, effectively, yes. So I, I was blogging um, as soon as I can, within a few days of completing the Camino, um, I set up a blog. And um, just, uh, I think I wrote a blog piece about the experience of walking the Camino, um, what it's all about, mm. um, some of my experiences. And somehow, and I don't know exactly what happened, I, I still don't know for sure, but somehow, somehow, and I had no plans before this journey, I know had no plans to be a writer. Right. I had um, no plans to write a book. But 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 I mean I, I enjoyed blogging and I, mm. and, I, and I said I've done that previously in my, when I when I had my sabbatical, um, but um, somehow uh, I, I was sort of a memoir, a blog memoir of the Camino de Santiago morphed into a fictional story. Nice. And um, of course, it it's it, 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 it was inspired by the people I met, mm-hmm. their different stories, and and pretty much as I say, it's it's a, it's a journey of my lead character Diego, who is an aspiring flamenco guitarist. It's a journey of self discovery and him having the self belief and confidence that he has the talent. He has raw talent. But he doesn't mm. believe in him his talent, and he, and it's the different people that intersect his journey on the way and some of their stories and their wisdoms and eventually his wisdoms in the second book rubbing off on other people mm. um, that um, allow him to have the confidence to, to really pursue um, his um, his his musical talent seriously great and um so yeah so that was but i didn't you know, i didn't know some it just morphed into that yeah and yeah um and i think um i guess what i have learned about myself is i'm not somebody that can perhaps um write i don't know fiction up boy wizard stories out of my head right you know I, I, I'm, <laughs> that's not going to happen for me i don't have that imagination but if i'm it, it's all about people in place mm. if I put myself in a different environment um and give myself the time to you know not whiz through a place but experience its richness I nice. think that's how it, it um um the creativity um finds its way onto the page yeah and so yeah so um I um blog morphed eventually into this novella the first story and then people wanted to know more. And so um, this year um, I published the second book in what's known as the um, Relu- Reluctant Pilgrim series, the Reluctant Great. Pilgrim series. And the first book was called Candy Floss Guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, then the um, second book, as I say, I just, just publishes the continuing um, story of my character without giving too much away. But he, he really is on purpose now and he has to go to Madrid to try and be a professional flamenco guitarist and he has challenges there and he continues his pilgrimage mm. um to becoming a, a, a guitarist and that one's called santiago's guitar mm. and so that's why i'm with with those two stories and so there there's going to be at least a third story yeah i'm just waiting for I've the guidance of, the guidance yes <laughs> yeah. i'm waiting for the signs to point me into the, well, i mean i have some ideas and flickering ideas and I've, I've left them in a sort of place where he's quite settled now. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, isn't that interesting? But, 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 but I, yeah, and, but I don't totally know his next story. And that's fine. I'm quite happy to park that. For yeah, the moment, I, I have some other ideas Steve, for, other, for other books. What I think is really interesting is the parallel with you anyway. Mm-hmm. So you wrote about this guy discovering his journey, you know, discovering, th- you know, his journey, um, discovering himself, finding that belief in what he was capable what he enjoyed and what he thought he was capable of doing um the second book was more about him being settled and doing it which i believe you are right i guess so yes i mean yeah. you, know, you, you know like in life as you say you still sometimes have doubts and things i mean sure. this is um, i've been very lucky the second book and the first book has, has hit number one in some amazon categories on, 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 on certain days not number one in the whole amazon store but kind of number one within certain fiction sure, sure. fiction categories and, and genres great. which is great so but that you know what i'm learning as an author like anything you know you have to have more products and more books yeah and um you know I th- and what i've learned like with me as you say in terms of being a bit more settled um I'm settled with that choice, yes, mm. um, of being an author. But I'm also settled with, you know, 
not just throwing away the other things of uh, the, the, the experiences and skills that I have. Brilliant. Um, and so I can use those as, as, whilst I'm transitioning, I would say, and, and, mm. and, and as I bring more books out. So um, I'm pretty settled um, with that respect of, yes, I'm going to at some point write his third story. Um, and um, also learning that uh, of evolving as an author, because I have a, a, another series I want to write. Yeah. And I actually think that that series is perhaps better more of a better commercial judgment for now yeah and and so i'll you know i'm sort of i'm in the research stages of that but yeah very settled in, in terms of the the, the the balance um and it sounds to me like this is a bit of a paradox but it sounds like you're also settled within not knowing what's next because in a way that's how a lot of what has happened for you has unfolded and as you said you don't know what you're what's coming next you're waiting to be guided you're waiting for the signs and there's mm -hmm. some there was a, a learning in that i think for for everyone which is in surrender yeah i think so um how would i put it I kind of know how I would like things to pan out in Great. terms of um, making a full-time living from being an author. Yep. Um, but I guess I'm learning patience. Yeah. And I've never been particularly great being patient. But I'm learning that if, as I say, if I keep taking one step mm. on that Camino, uh, uh, eat, you know, as I say, it took me 31 days to walk it. On day after day one, when you, Climb up, climb up about a thousand feet over the Pyrenees, and you're absolutely exhausted. It gets easier after that, you know. There are some more challenging days, but it, but you're like, oh my gosh, you know. I never thought, you know, it would be so hard the first day. But hey, lo and behold, you're, you know, you're um, 31, 30 days left to go, and that's twenty five kilometers of, of 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 the you know of the eight hundred. And, and mm. after a week, you know, you so you break it out. And so I'm learning that as long as I'm working towards a goal. Yeah, uh, and I'm continuing to walk. Um, I have to learn to to relax and be patient. Um, uh, and if you can keep that self belief, I think you you keep your positivity up towards towards um, whatever your objective um, um, goal is. Yeah. And what would you say for you personally are the ingredients of fulfillment? For me. I would just say it's it's one core core ingredient mm. self belief self belief beautiful Be self belief because um, I've had a lot of doubt in the past and you know, not to say I don't have doubts with with certain things but if you know there's something you really want to do you just have to break through the self doubt yeah and I think self belief is 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 is, an, is 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 for me is the most important ingredient. I think that's that's what comes through in my book. It's about self belief and faith. Right. Of, I will be a flamenco guitarist. Oh. You know, there's a lot of challenges as to why the the, the 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 character could look at it and say, you know, I'm going to give up. I'm going to return to my village mm -hmm. in Spain, and um, accept you know a, a life which will be comfortable. Yeah, but it won't fulfil me, and so I think you know the most important thing is self belief, and then trying to share with people who have um, you know who are on their journey. Yeah, um, why self belief is so important. Yeah, yeah. So there are two things that I that I picked up there. One, self belief and and faith. Um, great combination. So for me, that is a a, a within. Um, approach, which is, you know, you have to believe in yourself, but also have to believe in something greater than yourself, because faith in what, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's knowing that you don't know necessarily how things are going to turn out. But as you said, taking one step at a time, there's movement, there's traction, there's you being in the flow, mm -hmm. something will evolve. But believing in yourself allows you to move through that process with a lot more, I would say a bit more ease and grace at times. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, faith, I mean, faith, you can take it in many different ways. Sure. Um, I mean, again, using the metaphor of, the, of this pilgrimage, the Camino de Santiago. When you walk it, um, you see the, you see remains of um, medieval pilgrim um, hospitals. Wow. It's a whole community economy along there. You see, passing through villages, you see um, a lot of the Catholic churches. Mm. Um, you know, you pass through uh, um, 
three or four cities on that that journey and you see the majesty of um catholic cathedrals Mm -hmm. and you know you look at that at that at that point and you think faith a a religious faith got people through that journey yeah and and those symbols of you know the sort of cathedrals and the and the and the 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 gothic towers and things are kind of the skyscrapers of the time Mm -hmm. when you see that and you think my gosh you know how powerful is that as a self-belief faith or you know um how to put it Faith in just the Camino, the Camino, and I have mm-hmm. so many stories which have influenced my writing, the the the, the 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 series, or just my journey. Faith that the Camino will provide, yeah, somehow magically or spiritually, it just seemed to happen when you were at a low point or somebody else was at a low point. Mm. Just kind of like little miracles happen will happen along uh, uh, along that. I don't know something as simple as okay, here's one. Do we have time for yeah, a, yeah, a small story? Okay. Yeah. So um, I think I was probably about halfway th- um, along along the journey, so roughly, say, 400 kilometres or so. And I was um, walking along a kind of a stone track. And ahead of me, um, I saw a man with, 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 with club feet. Mm-hmm. And um, he was pulling what you would call like a sort of, um, I don't know, like a shopping trolley. You know, the, the shopping trolley, which you might associate with a retired person. And they're, they're, they're doing all their shopping and they're going around. He, he was pulling that. He didn't have a modern rucksack. Um, anyway, um, I stopped to chat with him. And um, he said he had, um, um, he was you know, completely exhausted. And he he said he'd walked he'd started the pilgrimage where I'd started it in this village called Saint Jean um, to Pierre de Port, um, so f- four hundred kilometres away or so, you know. And I was pretty um, 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 I couldn't believe really that he had made the as far as he had done. Yeah. Um, and the more we got talking, the more he told me he had polio, um, mm. and um, you know he was just looking for sort of kind of redemption or something. Um, right. At the but f- when he reached San, by the time he got to Santiago, so say so he had done very well. I thought to get that far, yeah. Um, and um, I, uh, but I, you know, I wasn't sure if he'd be able to make it too mm. much further, given just the, the slow progress he's making and um, the fact he had polio, etc. Mm. Anyway, it kind of put me in a little bit, little bit, bit of a dilemma. You know, should I help him? Should I offer to carry or pull his? bag you know I'd had, a, I'd had a modern rucksack it wasn't too heavy and I kind of I don't know I kind of sort of felt no I shouldn't it's his journey he's made it this far I shouldn't I shouldn't impose my sort of views on or you know it's his journey so anyway I, I carried on at a much faster pace and um you know still feeling a bit guilty mm. about about that Anyway, maybe about half a mile later, the the the, the um, path um, um, merged into um, a kind of. I think it was a kind of. It was a what was it? It was a meadow, and there. But also, it was a meadow where there it was an, it was an orchard of apple apple trees as well, and um, the path you know ran through it. But, but also on the side of the path, there was um, a stall holder hmm. selling fresh fruit drinks. Um, for a small donation, well, he was offering them. I mean, you could leave a donation if you wanted. And anyway, I, I took a breather there and had um, had a, had a drink, and uh, not too much longer. The man pulling along, wheeling along his shopping trolley mm. uh, um, basket um, uh, arrived uh, arrived there, and then straight away the the, the, the vendor, the, the, the juice stall um, um, holder, just placed the man down. Um, started just chatting to him in a very nice way, and I kind of overheard the conversation. And he said to him, "Look, um, my house isn't too far away from here. Would you, you know, you can re- rest up there if you like. And when you, you know, when you, you know, when you feel like you've got your energy back, you can continue on your journey." Mm. And kind of, you know, I just kind of thought to myself, you know, how magical is that? You know, the, just at the point when I had thought a low point about this guy, someone gave this man you know just just kind of um offered him an opportunity to rest up and mm. and continue his journey so yeah the point is you know faith i think having faith and when you open yourself up to, uh, up up to faith and opp- opportunities just seem to come along come along when you yeah. when you have that self-belief and faith yeah people sort of can i think people see it in, in you yeah and they want to help 
Yeah, and I think something really um, special about that story for me is that often we think um, we we sometimes project our own ideas onto people, or, you know, someone, as you said, who had polio or whatever you thought, well, maybe and seeing him perhaps struggling, you thought, OK, he's struggling. I could really help this guy. I think sometimes in those moments, the best thing we can do is not interfere mm -hmm. because you know, whatever his journey, as you said, it was his journey, he's going through whatever it is that he needs to go through. And it can be actually as hard as it is, you know, to sometimes do that, can be much more empowering to leave them to their journey as you've done. Um, and this generally in life as well. It's so someone's going through something that's really hard. Yes, of course, you want to help your friends, you want to help people. But something that I always, um, you know, my husband and I always think about with our kids when they're going through something, we do this with children. So even as adults, we, we want to bring that parallel there. If they're learning something and they're falling and they're doing something, you don't necessarily want to always go rush and pick them up. You know, toddlers will fall. You don't want to go rush and pick them up. <laughs> you give them the opportunity to stand on their own. Yes. And that empowers them. That strengthens their mm -hmm. legs, their core and everything so that they can walk and take those steps. So as, as simple as that might seem, and I know that you can understand why you might have felt guilty at the time, though I'm glad that you let that go. You empowered him to continue along his journey and perhaps could have robbed him of a learning had you actually intervened or helped at that point. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very special thing for us to recognize that, you know, it is important to be to to help people. It's important to be of service. But sometimes being of service means not interfering and letting people get on with the lessons that they need to learn at the time that they need to learn them. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's recognizing, yes, that when people are on a journey, they have to have their own learnings. Yeah. From it. But help. If someone reaches out, he, he actually didn't ask for my help, actually. No, no. If someone reaches out for help... That's different. That's a different matter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You wouldn't mm -hmm. you wouldn't have turned him down had no, he asked for a hand. No. But exactly. So it wasn't a self-imposed, let me help because I feel like mm -hmm. I need to help this person. You recognize, actually, why am I, mm -hmm. why do I feel like I need to help him? He's on his journey. Mm -hmm. I'm on my journey. And it's great that we've met. And then, you know, to see to see how things unfolded later. I think there's something really special message in there. <laughs> really special message. So I wanted to ask you about um, your writing. So I know that you're an author and it's not where you, you know, your journey started. Um, but I want to know how much you, I suppose, value the actual art of writing or the actualization of writing in your self-development. It sounds like it's very much linked for you because of how you came about into writing. I think so, yes. Um I think it's important for me, and I enjoy um, discovering and developing my um, how to put it, my creative prose, as such. And mm. you know, my writing how is quite simple. It's not sort of fluffy or um, um, not sort of very very descriptive. But it, it, I'm learning, um, my, you know, to find my author style and voice. And for me, it's it, it's sort of been quite succinct about things but getting the, the wider message across at the same same time um and i'm enjoying that because i have to look back the, the only sort of writing i did previously were um investment reports mm. um which were very, <laughs> very different yeah very different <laughs> quite standardized in, in, in the way you do that or I, I did do a little bit of writing financial writing for the um financial press right a sort of industry um financial press or you know client bulletins um, websites and things but that's a very different um uh, uh, uh thing yeah i'm not telling a story as such right um so yeah so it's for me it's, i've always enjoyed books so i mm. you know i grew up reading a lot of books but never had never thought and a lot of television as well kind of like growing up in the 80s right um um and i always enjoyed entertainment of story of story but never really thought of myself of writing a story or sharing mm. a story so for me now yes it, it it's also i guess again i'm evolving so with the first two books mm. it's it's been about telling a story understanding my style and craft and and um i've been pleasantly surprised with the reviews i've had um on amazon etc and, awesome. uh, and the way people have engaged with my story and i don't know Every week I get an email or two from somebody who's read my book and say they love it and they've left mm. a review. And I'm like, you know, wow, this is uh, yeah, a, great. A, 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 this is fantastic. Because I didn't know I had that in me. Mm. Uh, so there's also feeling proud and developing my style. Yeah. But there's also recognizing, okay, if I'm going to um, 
um, eventually become a full-time author, I also have to sort of be a little bit more commercial. Mm. I guess you would say my first two books are um, literary fiction, but also I think I need to become a bit more genre specific, right? As uh, to help find that more of that audience, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, so I think there's a, there's, a, there's there's there are new things for me to learn to develop my craft and, and my style, but also find a balance where I can write a bit more commercially and also write faster. Right. Learning to write faster because end of the day, you know, how do I put it? If um, somebody reads your book in eight hours right. and they like your writing, how can you keep up with that? You right, can't. sure. But at the same time, um, it's learning to to to, to, to uh, learning to develop that the, my skills of, of that kind of, of writing, writing muscle, really. Yeah, the writing. Yeah, that, that's that's very well put. The writing muscle and write more books. And mm. so um, I need to sort of this is my next next stage. Now is it, finding that it, that skill level and balance. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I think it's great because. Uh, you know, what you're talking about, again, is really about balancing heart and head. The the heart is there. You know that you like to write on experiences and travel and all the things that come mm-hmm. up that you immerse yourself into. Um, at the same time, the practicalities are, if you want to do it full time, yeah, there are mm-hmm. certain strategies and things that need to be in place. Yeah. Um, and this is a lot of what I talk about and, and, and work with clients who are transitioning into their dream business or doing work they love, is that you want to really know what you want. You want to be aligned. You want to be authentic and, and, and be within integrity in what really makes you come alive. But building a business isn't just heart. It definitely has a big, big part of it needs to be heart, I think, which a lot of businesses yes. may not have. Mm-hmm. But it is still about strategy. It is still about marketing. It's still about learning all of those things if yeah. you want to make a successful business in the world as it is today. And that's what know? I'm having to learn um, as well, really, as, a, as an indie author. I mean, um, I did it even, well, I approached a couple, actually, of publishers with the first book. Um, but, you know, I'm not a known. It's a story about Flamenco guitarist and novella, mm-hmm. the first one. An actual fact, um, one, pers- the pers- one person I didn't, or one company I didn't hear back from, but another publisher, they said, oh, yeah, we love your story. We, and we love your writing style. Um, but we just can't, don't know where we'd pitch this. We don't right. quite know that the, 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 there's a genre, but... We're doing a lot of um, crime stories at the moment. Can you write us a crime story? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, well, that's that's that 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 that, that that's really nice, but I don't yeah. have a crime story. Yeah, um, yeah. So then that was a kind of decision. Okay, well, let's just pursue the the sort of the indie publishing, which is a lot easier these days. But yeah. but uh, with a professional head, you know, yeah, well, um, you know. So I've got a professional editor, proofreading yeah. team, um, uh, um. A fantastic cover designer who's Brilliant. worked for a number of the big houses. He's even, he's even designed covers for Stephen King. Brilliant! Oh, so, Stephen King, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, uh, uh, doing all those things professionally, but also you have, to, as you said, you mentioned marketing. You got yeah. if you're going to take it seriously and professional, the, 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 whatever it is you choose to do, you have to learn about marketing. Yeah, of course. You have to do all those things. And social media, you can't get away from that. No, these days. No. Um, and so I've been, you know. And in the previous world, I had a, I was a you know a cog in a wheel in an investment department, and there was a big marketing team Everyone around else did us it. that yeah. did that, you know. <laughs> and um, I'm sort of the person then feed, feeding the marketing team ideas, but they make it look all nice and glossy and right. know how to get the marketing out there. So now I'm kind of learning that, and I guess the the big thing for me, I think this year after I wrote the second book, is that yes, it's been well received. Mm. It's, I've had some nice sales, etc. Is that but if I really want to go to the next, next level next level of things um i've got to switch my thinking to an extent and be able to switch between creative hat yes and business hat yeah and so the next stage for me now i'm learning is okay i've got to treat this seriously in a sense mm. you know i've got to be a business person yeah um which means um being respectful that the fact you know if my writing is if my business is writing mm. i have to write more yeah 
and um, I have to a- apply a-, a business side to, to things as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so important, you know, um, coming to that realization obviously is great. And, you know, I know you know how to put one foot in front of the other. So <laughs> it might not be 31 days, but, yeah. you know, developing those skills will certainly take you far. So I know that you mentioned um, Paulo Coelho earlier. Do you, who would you say are your favorite authors these days or any favorite books of yours? As a writer, I'm always curious to know what you like to read. Gosh, that's a good question. I, I read quite, I mean, quite, quite variedly. Um, admittedly, I think in, the, in, in more recent years, I've um, perhaps read some more books which you would associate with sort of, I don't know, spiritual or metaphysical hmm. um, side of, of, of things. So yeah, so Paolo Coelho definitely was an influence with the pilgrimage book, which I discovered, and The Alchemist, and um, a couple more of his, of, of his books. Um, who else would I say? Um, I mean, I think I've actually discovered a few in- indie authors, which um, right. I-, I-, I quite like. So there's a guy called Keith Foskett um, who who writes um, travel memoirs, which are just sort of um, long distance walking travel memoirs. So oh, cool. so, he- so so Keith Foskett, he's got a he's got a few book long distance walking books out there, which I right I- up your street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I- I like. so it's kind of it's made me um, look, you know, um, explore other other kind of authors i don't know who else would i say herman hess has um been very influential on on me sadata right. so, so those are the kind of i guess you know with that sort of the coelos mm. herman hess uh books but um, as i say I, I kind of like um you're broad with your yeah i um, mean i like um as i say it, it ten- has tend to be in more recent years travel related mm. um stories like paul bowles is um, an american writer who lived in morocco for all of his life and has written a about North Africa, I've just did. What's a book I've just read? I think it's set in out. It's a travel story about Americans traveling around Algeria mm. in the in the fifties. I think it's called the, the Sheltering Sky. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's quite an interesting sort of people sort of understanding themselves in in in, in a new environment. Mm. Um, Which is a really interesting theme, you know, having traveled and and finding yourself through being somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Changing environment can be so powerful. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I just when I say I think. A lot of it has come back to like I think I like the sort of the underdog and mm. and journeys and you know so Tolkien you know I read Tolkien at a very young age and you know how to put it you know these small hobbits right on and having to sort of um, overcome such evil mm. and go on a journey and I think that's resonated with me but no I mean I like thrillers as well you know um, and and so I you know I will read thrillers and uh, you know kind of um, again as kind of a thriller there's a mystery and there's an, a, often an underdog. Yeah, I was um, a big Stephen evil. King fan as a teenager. Mm-hmm. I haven't read him in a while, but I yeah. used to. I used to love his his work when I was much younger. Yeah, well, I, I admittedly I haven't read any Stephen King. I mean, I've seen some actually films of late. Yeah, I've some interesting sort of, thrillers. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm actually <laughs> went to see The Shining recently, wow, which okay. is on. They've got they've got um, um, Stanley Kubrick season mm. currently at the NFT, and so The Shining. Uh, okay, it was one of his, which is Stephen yeah, King yeah, book, yeah, yeah. which um, I saw, which just was great so um yeah awesome. uh, pretty wide does that does that answer oh no your of course it does yeah mm. just to have an idea of yeah. what you like to read so what sound do you love gosh i have to pick one sound it can be more than one but okay. i'm sure i'm sure there are many but just okay. what comes oh, to mind okay. right okay. now two two things just came to mind so, yep. so one is the sound of um pebbles um mm. lapping on a beach the, mm. the sort of the of them clinking together Wow, a bit like yeah. castanets, perhaps, you know, yeah. we're talking about um, flamen- flamenco. Um, and I th- the water just, you know, rippling against them and then mm. the movement, the sounds of them clinking together. And I think part of that takes me back to my childhood, I think. Mm. And we used to, um, I'm from North Somerset, uh, Bristol originally. And so we used to have, a, in the summer, a lot of weekends. It's easy to get into Devon right. and Cornwall. And so we'd, we'd have week weekends or day trips and longer holidays in Devon and Cornwall, mm. and so we had a lot of seaside trips nice. with my family. So that I think that reminds me of just sort of just freedom and childhood and just nice. serenity and peace. Yeah. And I say the other thing, um, I guess, and this probably reminds me of the Camino and just going for the importance of going for a long walk. Um, and you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, you go with your brother. I think you said into the woods and things. And yeah. Like that. It's just the rustle of the the leaves and the mm. trees. Um, the wind, yeah. the wind through it. That's just so just so peaceful it is it's just it kind of it's just such a natural 
Nature's orchestra. Yes, nature's orchestra. Yeah. So that's just that's just to me that's just a real serenity that um, I enjoy. That's so beautiful. Well, I have to say thank you so, so, so much, Steve. Uh, To connect with and learn more about Steve, you can find him at stephenmarriott.com. Is that right? That's correct, yes. That's right, okay. So remember to check out his books, Candy Floss Guitar and Santiago's Guitar of the Reluctant Pilgrim series, which you can find on his website and you can find it on Amazon as well. Make sure to check it out. Leave a great review. Let us know what you think when you've read those books and hopefully you're inspired as well to take a journey into self and see what the, where that leads you. I want to say thank you so much for coming, Steve, and for all the work that you're doing. Thanks so much for sharing your inspiring story. I really celebrate all that you are. And thanks for being a shining example of living with passion and purpose and just taking steps towards whatever it is that you want in life. Oh, you're more than welcome. I can't believe the time has gone so fast. I know. So I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Ah, thank you. So I have one final question for you, and that is, what is your soulful sound to the world, a self-prayer or desire you wish upon the world? I think it comes back to what I said before, faith and self-belief. Mm. I think the more people that will have faith in themselves and the yeah. self-belief in their ability um, and, a, and as such, you know, understand if they get outside of their comfort zone, things will be okay. Yeah. I think um, uh, there'll be more harmony and, and happiness in the world. There you have it. I love that. Thanks again for your time and your presence. Much love to you. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to share it with your friends and remember to subscribe. From my heart to yours, sending you love, healing, and sound wherever you are.